This video is brought to you by Small Rig. Well, good morning, everybody. Today is going to be one of those days where I get on I-90, start driving east, and just see what happens. Some of my favorite days and some of my favorite pictures are taken doing just that. So we'll see what happens today. But right now, I've stopped off at the good old faithful, trusty Snoqualmie Pass, home to some of my favorite pictures that I've ever taken. And this morning I've spotted this grater over here that's kind of buried in snow, which I think is kind of a cool way to start the day. But um, yeah, I'm going to continue on I-90 later and just drive around out in eastern Washington. we got a beautiful sunny day, it looks like, so should be a good one. But we're going to start off loading some Portra 400 into the Bronica. You know what? Actually, Portra 800 into the Bronica SQ. We'll start off with 800 this morning and uh, see what we can get up to on this fine Saturday, sunny Washington day. Got some beautiful morning light coming up on the mountains right now. The sun is just rising. Gorgeous morning. The texture of the frost on this tire is really, really cool. It comes and goes. The light right here just got really cool. The sun just came up over the ridge over there. I'm gonna grab a few more pictures. I feel like I've started out this morning taking pictures I wouldn't usually take. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Alright guys, those of you who have been watching for a while probably remember the infamous Snoqualmie Pass van. It was one of my favorite subjects to photograph up here at the Summit Inn at Snoqualmie Pass. It was just this old van that just sat in the parking lot for over a year and I'd, whenever I'd pop up this way I'd always swing in grab a picture of it and then one day the van was gone never got the story as to where the van came from whose it was and where it went so while I'm up here at the Summit Inn at Snoqualmie Pass today I thought why not go in ask see if we can get to the bottom of this so let's see if we can find the origin story and the disappearance story of the infamous Snoqualmie Pass van. I have a very random question. Um, so, I don't know if you recall, like over a year ago, there was a van that used to sit out in the parking lot that just sat there for like a year. Oh. I don't even, I don't know if you were even here during that time, but um, I'm, I'm a photographer and I used to take pictures of it as the seasons went on, because it just sat there mm -hmm. for so long. Um, and I was just curious, if you knew or anybody knew what ended up happening to it. Oh. I'm just curious about the story is all. <laughs> uh, uh, when, how, how long it was? Um, the last time I saw it was probably about eight months ago mm. or so. But I, I haven't been up oh. this way in, oh. in a while. Uh, manager Kamal, she's coming. Okay. Okay, yeah, perfect. Within a half an hour, she must okay. know about the story, and I'm I'm getting curious uh, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had so. I'll show you a couple of pictures. It, it just sat there forever, and then uh, one winter, mm -hmm. a bunch of snow piled oh. up on it, uh -huh. and it like broke the ceiling and the windshield and everything. Oh. Yeah, so they must have towed it. But uh -huh. I'll show you a picture. Uh -huh. It's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, that's it right there. Oh, can I 
crazy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So it was just sitting out in the parking lot for oh, quite a oh while. My God. <laughs> but you said she'll be here in about 30 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Well, just spoke to the lady in the front desk. She had no idea what I was talking about, but she said that the manager is coming in in 30 minutes. And I figure if anybody knows the story behind the van, it's going to be the manager of the hotel that the van was parked at. So I'm going to wait for her to get here, see if we can ask her some questions, get to the bottom of this story and uh, see if she can point us in the right direction. But to kill 30 minutes, I think I'm going to walk around with the Olympus 35, shoot the rest of the roll of Fuji that I have in there. And uh, yeah, we'll walk around, see if we can find some 35 millimeter compositions around the Summit Inn and Snoqualmie Pass. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we might have just found ourselves the new, the new van. It's not a van, but we got the same, same concept going on here. Somebody just left this thing to die. What is this, a Cadillac? A Lincoln? If only this car wasn't here, we could get a good composition of it. We might be in business for this winter, guys. I mean, this thing is like fully buried. This is, this is on par with how bad the van was. I like how I'm celebrating somebody's car getting destroyed for photography. But at the same time, it's like, what did you really expect leaving it out here in the winter, you know? What did you think was gonna happen? I mean, at this rate, I'm starting to think that the odds are in my favor of a car being left here through the winter every year. And that would be borderline even cooler than a book solely dedicated to the van. Imagine a book about all the different cars that get left here and then destroyed. Wow, might be onto something. Classic beer bottle right next to the tire of a car. It actually reminds me of a pretty hilarious and somewhat sketch story <clears throat> that actually took place right here in this parking lot. So it happened about a year ago. I was actually out here shooting a YouTube video, taking long exposures. It was actually right when I was taking the picture, one of my favorite long exposures of the street light in the back side of the parking lot here. But I heard this kid coming around the far side of the hotel and I look over and this, is, this dude, probably my age, is walking around open carrying a rifle. No case or anything like that. Just a rifle in one hand and a beer bottle in the other. And about every fourth step he takes, he's just projectile vomiting everywhere, all over the parking lot. He wasn't trying to hide it from anybody. And I was like, this is not the scene I need to get into right now. But he quickly saw me with my camera and he stumbles up to me and he's, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the? I'm like, come again sir he's not coherent at all trying to spit out some sort of sentence i'm eventually like dude you just you probably go back to the hotel go to bed he's, oh. and just projectile vomits about three feet away from me and i'm like okay man you gotta you gotta get out of here he walks back to his car throws his rifle in his car grabs a beer bottle and walks away and it was one of the most interesting things i've ever witnessed and then i realized that i easily probably could have become roadkill had it been for one wrong sentence on my end so yeah oh and by the way he was driving a lowered subaru wrx no surprise there so they breed him different out here apparently but i think it's been about 30 minutes so let's go check in see if the manager's here and we can get that story with the van oh hi <clears throat> yeah um i was just just random um i'm a photographer and there used to be a van out in the parking lot like a year ago and it just sat there for a really long time and I'd always go up and take pictures of it as the seasons went on and just out of curiosity I was wondering what ended up happening to it or like what if you knew about it or who the owner was or anything like that. I saw it got pretty destroyed by the snow yeah. one year snow so. Is, every year as you know that every year the snow is bad. Yeah all the weight I knew just 
crushed yeah. it. So, but I was just I was just curious if there was some interesting story behind it or something. But <laughs> all right, sounds good. Thank you. Well, that was pretty anticlimactic. Don't think that guy wanted to talk to me much. Didn't look me in the eyes once during our entire brief conversation. Said some guy here that worked here owned it and they towed it away. That's all he gave me. So, don't think he has uh, too many cares in the world about that van. But rest assured, we got a new player in town. That Cadillac Lincoln mystery car over there. That's going to be a fun one to photograph this winter. And I can't wait to come on a day where there isn't a car parked next to it so I can get a good vantage point of it. And who knows, maybe each winter from here on out we'll have a new car that gets left here covered in snow, buried just for me to photograph. So let's uh, continue eastbound on I-90 and see what kind of trouble we can get into. Well, here we are at the trusty Cleellum gas station. Uh, finished the roll of Portra back there at the overpass. But I see a cool little subject over here in the snow. So I'm gonna load up a roll of Ektar, believe it or not, and uh, show everybody hating on it why they shouldn't be hating on it. For me, this photo is an example as to why Ektar is so great. You get those contrasty, punchy, saturated colors similar to that of which you'd get on reversal film, all while retaining the latitude and flexibility that you get with color negative film. I also think that Ektar has this kind of buttery softness to it compared to Portrait that I'm really a fan of. I'm also just stoked on this picture, compositionally speaking. What originally drew me in was just the subject, the car covered in snow and that simple garage in the center of the frame and then Ektar really delivered with those deep rich blues in the sky and that nice red color in the dirt in the foreground. So overall I'm stoked on the way that this picture came together. Middle of the road ones are always fun. I really like the entryway to this house. Nice and simple, kind of old school shovel on the steps. So it'd be pretty cool. Over the past year, I've noticed myself become more and more critical when it comes to what I take photos of. When I first started shooting film, one of the things that I loved right off the bat was just how I found mundane, everyday things that I'd drive by regularly or that I'd walk by every day. I found them 
interesting suddenly. I found them intriguing. And that was kind of the case for the first year that I, I was photographing on film. And then for whatever reason, that kind of slowly faded away and I became very picky about what I wanted to photograph. And suddenly things just weren't worthy of, of pressing the shutter anymore. And I've noticed that my happiness when it comes to pho photography has diminished. And I think they're directly related. But for whatever reason today, I've kind of felt that spark again. And it's been really, really nice. I think maybe having the 35 mil camera with me has something to do with it. But I've just been walking around and, and not really second guessing myself when it comes to what I want to take a picture of. And that's something I haven't felt in a really long time. So yeah, I don't know, something different about today. And hopefully I can get back into that routine of just not being afraid to, to pull the trigger on anything that I find remotely curious because I think that is at the core what makes photography so fun. Could you risk your world in my hands? I and I do it again. Be patient, cause I'll make mistakes. All but one frame remains. I'm so tired. All right, here we go for the last frame of the evening. It's pretty dim for Ektar, but you got the old F4 at 1 60th to make it work. So nothing special with some old cars. Very film photographer of me, but you know what? I like it. Well, Cleellum, it was a treat as always. All right, guys, I want to jump in and say thanks to Small Rig for sponsoring the video today. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with Small Rig and their products. I've been using their products ever since I picked up the GH5S back in 2018 and built a cage out on that system using Small Rig gear. And now I've done the same thing on the Blackmagic 6K Pro that I picked up. I actually bought the cage itself and all the clamps on the camera, the mounting plate for my V mount battery, and this little side handle with my own money before Small Rig even reached out to me. But they did reach out and they wanted to send me some more gear and they sent me this side handle and this top grip here and I was originally skeptical to put it on the camera because as you guys know I film alone I'm hiking all the time and this 6k pro is no light camera and I didn't need to make this setup any heavier than it needed to be but I decided to give the handle and the top grip a try threw them on the camera and holy smokes really really impressed with how much versatility was added just with these two items the top grip particularly makes my life so much easier just having this extra contact point to do simple things like take the camera in and out of my car pick it up and move it to a new location swivel the ball head to get the angle correct it's all done so much easier with this top grip and it actually takes a lot of the stress off of my back just carrying this thing awkwardly all the time like i was before so this thing has been a lifesaver. And then the side handle is just nice for any kind of tracking shots that I might be doing, tracking a bird or an animal. Just gets, you know, you get a little extra stability with the side handle here, and then you can use the top grip as well, get a nice, smooth, stable shot. Yeah, really, really stoked with uh, the setup. Got the small rig cage, side handle, top grip, a couple other things on here. The links for all this stuff will be in the description if you wanna check out small rig and their accessories. They make accessories for a lot more cameras than just this guy pretty much every camera in existence. Not, not really, don't quote me on that, but they make a ton of accessories, most likely for the camera that you have. So like I said, their information will be in the description below, but yeah, thanks to Small Rig for sponsoring the video. 
And if you want to check them out, you know where to go.